And the final interview addresses the topic of evolutionary psychology, which is how evolution has influenced male and female sexuality. And we use the anthropologist Don Simons again, who's also written a book about evolutionary psychology, to give us his insight into this phenomenon. If you want an epiphany, I think it was when I, I really, for the first time, read about homosexuals and realized how different lesbian behavior is from the behavior of gay men. And suddenly, I, that was as close to an epiphany on this as, as I ever came, because I realized that, that gay men are just men and lesbians are just women. And what you're seeing in gay male sex and in lesbian sex, respectively, is male sexuality and female sexuality unencumbered by compromising with the other sex. And what you mean by that is the frequency of partners, the frequency of sex, and sure. so forth. That, that it transcends sexual orientation. Men like sex with strangers. It's attractive. And women generally don't. So, but if, you're, if you look at only the behavior of, of heterosexuals, uh, it's impossible for men to be only having sex with strangers and women not, because every time a man has a new partner, there's got to be a woman who's having a new partner too. So the numbers have got to add up. They've got to be exactly the same for males and females. So if you're just looking at behavior, there, you can't really see much difference between heterosexual men and heterosexual women. But if you look at gay men, that's not true. Because if, if men enjoy sex with strangers and you, you're having sex with other men, then you have the opportunity to, to have sex with strangers if that's what other men want. So you look at the number of partners, and it turns out that gay men, at least in places like the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, the typical man will have sex with hundreds and often thousands of partners over a relatively brief span, which actually isn't that much sex if you think about it. If, if most of the sex you're having is with strangers, um, you have to have, if you're going to have much sex at all, you're going to have a lot of partners. And in the same study, this, this came out much later, a uh, scientific study uh, in the Bay Area, Lesbians were behaving roughly like heterosexual women in terms of partner number, in terms of the duration of, of relationships, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, I don't know, but it, it, it was, it's roughly the same. And what that tel tells me is that the reason that heterosexual males are not having sex all the time with strangers and sex in public restrooms and, and so forth is that women aren't interested in that kind of sex very often, at least not if they're not paid for it. And so that was a, I think that was sort of the, a light bulb went off then and things started to come together. Well, the curious thing about the example you use is that, I mean, what was the prevailing notion of, of homosexuality then was it was a deviation from a heterosexual norm. To what way does it parallel, you know, what would be evolved gender specific behavior? And I mean, once you do look at it and that way. And that's looking outside the box. I guess. I, I, didn't, I didn't think of it that way, but I, I suppose it was. Um, but lots of things fall into place then. If you look at, if you look at gay male porn, it's, uh, it's the same as, as straight male porn, except it's two men rather than males and, and females together. There, there's no difference. And one of the things this tells you, for example, is that there are lots of, uh, of views of pornography that, that focus on male attitude towards females, that, that pornography is fundamentally revealing something about men's attitude towards women, contempt or lack of respect or, or something like that. Well, it's, it's possible, but here you've got a test case. If that were true, you would expect that gay male porn would be very different because you have men interacting with other men. But it's not. It's the same. And what that tells me is that uh, the basic message of, uh, of pornography, the mainstream video porn, is not that it reveals anything about men's attitude towards women, it reveals something about the essence of male sexuality. And that's one of the, the powerful uses, I think, of, of comparing gay and, and straight people. If you credit a male pattern of behavior to evolution, or that's in a certain adaptation, some people could take the perspective that, well, that's just a way of legitimizing you know, male insensitivity, male promiscuity, male whatever else. Um, that is something that's specific to the argument you make, and 
that's a reasonable reaction from a certain vantage point. But even the argument that it, that it somehow justifies male promiscuity is, is clearly wrong. And I can remember even back in the 70s, teaching a seminar in which I was talking about these kinds of things, and one of the male students said, well, this is, this is great, and women should know about this so, so they'll know why their husbands are behaving this way. And a, a perceptive woman student in the class said, all they'll know is that men are doing this because they want to, and they already knew that. And she's right. 